Hi, hello, how are you? Today we're going to talk about the, well, I have come up with a list. Maybe not me, but I was trying to generate ideas in my brain, of course, for what to do for 13 nights of Halloween. And I thought, huh, everyone keeps talking about AI generated content and and all this controversy and whatever, whatever. I know y'all gonna have something to say about it, so I'm prepared for it in the comments. But I've also prepared for it by saying, all I did was give the chat suggestions and my brain ran away with it. That's all I gotta say about that. So I asked chat GPT to give me a top list of Halloween movies for the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. And it did not fail me. It just didn't give me a broad description of these films. So that's where my brain power had to come in. Thank you, IMDb. You're the best. So today we are going to talk about the top Halloween movies of the decade 1980. So before we get started with all of that, welcome to the channel. Uh, here we do filmmaking tips, tricks, documentaries, short films, feature films, commentary, reviews, and all kinds of things right here on this channel. So if you like the content, please hit the like button hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and be abreast and aware of all the goody things that are going to come out of this channel, be it you're here for tutorials or the films. Either way, we love having you here. And without further ado, let's start with this lovely decade-long walk through the 1980s and Horror. <coughs> Starting with the year 1980. Shocker, right? <laughs> so, we're going to open the decade with The Shining. If you don't know what The Shining is, or anything about Stephen King or Stanley Kubrick or anything. Are you truly a horror fan? I mean, this is wonderful. There are a handful of directors that should deserve to even attempt to adapt a Stephen King novel. And Stanley Kubrick is one of them was one of them. So, The Shining is based off of Stephen King's novel of the same name. The film is set in a haunted hotel. And no, not the Bates Motel. A hotel. Um, this family heads to this isolated hotel for the winter where Jack Nicholson's character is possessed by some violent influences in the house, poltergeist ghosts, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. And he has a son who is psychic and sees horrifying things that I don't think any child should ever see. And would probably need a lot of therapy to unsee. There's a follow-up movie that came out a couple of years ago. You may want to check that out. The movie stars Nick, Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, and Danny Lloyd. And of course, it was written and directed by Stanley Kubrick. And listed as co-writers are Stephen King and Diane Johnson. It's a wonderful movie. It's amazing. And if you've seen iconic scenes of a child riding through a hallway on a tricycle 
or these really eerie, scary twins at the end of the hallway, or even just the elevator where the blood gushes out of it. All of that is The Shining, and that is all reasons for you to go check it out. Now, there's a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror that parodies The Shining. If you've seen that, you may want to go back to the 80s and watch the actual movie. Moving on to 1981, where we have American Werewolf in London. This John Landis directed film is a horror comedy. A horror comedy. Nice. It is about two American tourists who encounter a werewolf in England. It's a horror comedy. What do you expect? <laughs> um. These two American college students go on a walk into a Britain and are attacked by a werewolf. But here's the thing, no one there wants to admit the werewolf exists at all. Come on, Britain. You hate Americans that much? Really? Really? All we ever did was won our independence and fought for it and uh, yeah. You hate us that much? That movie stars David Nogaton. I know I screwed that up. Don't judge me. Jeannie Agatar and Joe Bletcher. Go look at IMDb. You'll see who those people are. Of course, I did just flash their pictures across the screen, but I digress. Moving on to 1982, The Poltergeist. It's another one. It's another classic that if you haven't seen it, what are you doing with your life? The Poltergeist is about a family that is haunted by malevolent spirits in a house that they live in. Oh, it was one of the most terrifying movies that came out in the... 80s. Yeah. Um, you have um, children being sucked into the TVs and just all around hauntings and oh my gosh, it is horrific. And then when you find out, you know, why the house is haunted, makes you want to think about your real estate options a little bit more, right? Yeah, there's also, almost all of these movies that we're going to talk about has a Treehouse of Horror parody. So if you don't want to actually go see the actual movie, which I do recommend that you do, you can always go check out Treehouse of Horror and there you go. The next one is The Dead Zone in 1983. I am going to admit I have not seen The Dead Zone. So I'm just going to read what I found on IMDb. The Dead Zone is directed by David Cohenberg based on, you guessed it, Stephen King. Ah, Stephen King is the king of horror. It's a thriller about a man who gains psychic abilities after a coma and tries to stop a political candidate's sinister future. Like I said, I have not seen The Dead Zone, but I feel like I want to watch it just so I can review it or even do it as a reaction video. If you want to see me do a reaction video to The Dead Zone, let me know and I'll try my best. It stars Christopher Walken. Yeah, maybe I should watch it. I mean, Christopher Walken is a piece of work in and of himself. Um, and Martin Sheen. Charlie Sheen's daddy. And Emilio Estevez's daddy. Let that sink in if you didn't know that fact already. And 
now we go to the year of my birth, 1984, with the nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> I love this movie so much. Nightmare on Elm Street is directed by Wes Craven. It stars the one, the only, Freddy Krueger. The stuff of nightmares. If you've seen those nails, you want to run the other direction and make sure that you have plenty of no-dos to keep you awake until he's moved on from you. Freddy Krueger is a vengeful spirit who haunts teenagers in their dreams. As I said, you need some no-dos. At least until you grow out of your teen years. You know, when you're 20. Uh, Nancy Thompson must uncover the dark truth concealed by her parents after she and her friends become the targets of the spirit of a serial killer with the snazziest sharpened gloves you'll ever find on the market. Freddy Cougar is an icon for a reason you need to watch this movie. There is one scene that should be terrifying but I admit, I laughed through the entire scene. It was hilarious. Heather Loggenkamp, Johnny Depp. This is Johnny Depp's debut film, by the way. And Rod Robert Egnand, the guy who plays Freddy Krueger. I know I fucked up that name. Don't give me shit about it. I already know. Um, it's amazing, and I would recommend that you not watch the remake unless you want to be disappointed for the rest of your life. Especially when you watch the remake, you go back and watch the original. I always watch the original, even when I was younger. Another amazing filmmaker in the horror genre, George A. Romero. This is the third film in the Romero zombie series, exploring the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse as the world is overrun by zombies, a group of scientists and military personnel sheltering in an underground bunker in Florida must determine how they should deal with the undead horde. Before Resident Evil, there was Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. Starring Laurie, Cardell, Terry Alexander, and Joseph Palto. Go check out the movie. It's great. We come to 1986 with Trick or Treat, not Trick or Treat. That's a that's coming later, but Trick or Treat. I have not seen this one. I want to see it. If you want to see me react to it, let me know. I'll try my best. Directed by Charles Martin Smith. This is again a horror comedy where a teenager summons a rock star back from the dead with deadly consequences a bully teenage boy it's always the bullied ones that try magic we just want a little revenge right A bullied teenage boy is devastated after the death of his favorite metal icon, Sammy Kerr. But as Halloween night approaches, he discovers that he may be the only one who can stop Sammy from making a satanic comeback from beyond the grave. I like 80s metal. I like horror. 
Maybe I should give this one a shot. You want to see me try it? Comment down below and I'll try it for you. All right, this movie stars Mark Pierce, Tony Fields, and Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa <laughs> Oregani. I know I mess I messing up names today. I am I deeply apologize. I am messing up all of the names. Forgive me. <coughs> we are down to nineteen eighty seven. Um, Evil Dead 2 is a blend of horror and comedy. Again, another horror comedy. The 80s was deathly in love with horror comedies. I don't know why. I know why. It's the 80s. That's all that needs to be said. It is the sequel to the 1981 film The Evil Dead. No repeats. That's why it's not only going to Okay. The sole survivor of the onslaught of the flesh-possessing spirits that was held up in a cabin with a group of strangers while the demons continue their attack. Poor Bruce Gamble. He just can't get away from them. And as I said, this one stars Bruce Campbell, Sarah Barry, and Dan Hicks. Amazing cast. And anytime you see Sam Raimi has a movie, always check because somehow, someway, he shoehorns Bruce Campbell into making some kind of cameo appearance if he's not the star of the movie. It's just a fact. Like, I have yet to see a Sam Raimi outing without Bruce Campbell. One of my favorites and one of my other favorite horror directors, Tim Burton. The man that made an entire generation of peep goths just burst out of nowhere when they were children in the 1980s and teenagers in the 90s because of this film and another one we're going to see on the 90s list. Beetlejuice. No, I'm not saying it three times. We don't need that bitch up in here. We have enough trouble as it is. This is 2023. I don't know what's going to happen. So, Beetlejuice. Directed by Tim Burton. And you see a lot of Tim Burton signature stuff in Beetlejuice. You see a little bit of it in Edward Scissorhands, but you see a lot more of it in Beetlejuice. It's a comedy fantasy. Okay, this is a Halloween list. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be all horror movies, okay? Where a recently deceased couple go they don't realize they're dead yet. They go back to their home and live out their dead years in their house until this family, this random ass family, moves in and now they have to hire a bio exorcist to remove this living family from their house. Now, you'll also see a trend emerging out of Tim Burton films. <coughs> and finally, we come to the end of the 80s. 1989's Pet Cemetery. I know what you're thinking. They did a remake. 
don't watch the remake unless you really want to regret your life choices. Or unless you really like horrible remakes, which apparently that's all we're doing now is horrific remakes of movies that were perfectly fine the way they were. It's about a family that moves into this remote house and discovers a cemetery near their home with the ability to bring the dead back to life, but not without dire consequences. So your kitty dies. Oh, I want mittens to come back. Take him to pet cemetery, bury him. Mittens comes back. That is not mittens. And I cannot begin to tell you the horrific thing that happens in this film. Of course, it's 1989. And if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is why I do not play with big rigs when I'm driving. And why I believe every house that is near a road with a small child should have a fence that is all I'm giving you. Go see the movie. <coughs> Alright, these movies from the 1980s are wonderful and iconic in and of themselves. As I said before, this is not a comprehensive list of all of the great horror movies of the 1980s. It's just what the AI generated thing gave me to give to you guys. I grew up on horror movies. I grew up with these horror movies. My mother is horrified to find out that I grew up watching these horror movies when she thought that I was watching something like Nick at Night or some crap. <laughs> Sorry mom. USA exists for a reason. Um, and I get excited every time I see them, even when it's not spooky season, because why not? They're amazing. And with that, I want to say thank you for joining me in this video. If you enjoyed it, please share and subscribe and click the notification button. Hit the like button. Do all of the things with the buttons down below. And while you're down there, Go a little bit further down to my link tree and to all of the social media for this channel, this company, and you can see when we come out with short films, feature films, tutorials, reviews, reactions, commentaries, and very soon, documentary. We have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Threads, yes we have a Threads. Of Reddit and Discord. They will be all be in the link tree below as well as a link to the merch shop which is near the end of October. I even I can't resist doing the Christmas stuff. I know it hurts me too but it is what it is and I gotta do it if I want to make some money. Um, also, the Patreon page, your subscription to Patreon, will help the channel out, as well as when you buy merch from the merch store. So check out all of the things down below, and we will see you on the next one from 13 Nights of Halloween and Ladybug Productions. Mwah. Happy hunting, my lovelies! We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Mm -hmm.